Hi, I'm Richard and in today's tutorial we will import our objects into Unity and set up some physics so they work on the table. So let's get started. Hi and thanks for watching. In today's tutorial we will export our table and matchstick into Unity and add some of the box colliders and physics that we need to get this thing actually kind of working in a, in a sort of sort of a ready state for the next stage. Uh, before we go into that there's something I wanted to say uh, which is that I've now just hit and just passed 600 subscribers. I say this every now and again perhaps, perhaps I say it too often but I love you guys. I can't believe I've got 605 subscribers. It's It staggers me. I don't do this for, uh, for profit. Uh, trust me you need to have a lot more than 600 subscribers to make uh, a profit on this, but I, I am um, I'm thrilled that people find my, my videos worthy of watching and, and indeed subscribing to. So thank you so much. Um, I will continue to create these videos, always interested in hearing your, your feedback and your input in what you might want in the future. Somebody came up with a very good idea the other day, actually, which I will um, uh, probably explore after this series here. But for now, I'm going to continue this series. So thank you again. Thank you so much. 62,000 views. Look at that. 204 videos I've created. So please keep watching, and I hope you're enjoying them. Right. So anyway, enough of the uh, enough of the loving. Let's let's work on getting this table exported now. 2.5 has this new feature now where you can uh, uh, set a project up with a template of a Unity. So let's just have a little play. Let's just try straight away. Let's just try to file export textures because we imported it as a Unity project. And look, it's given us the Unity 5 standard metallic um, uh, config. Now, the one thing that's missing here for me is the height channel. However, however, I have found that the height channel doesn't really add a lot, really, when... Um, when you're doing sort of imports into Unity from here, um, it, it you can kind of increase the sort of depth of these things, but too much. It doesn't seem to work in any any reasonable fashion. So I'm going to give this a go. We don't have an emission channel actually, but so it'll fail. It'll throw an error, uh, but it, it actually won't fail. It'll just it'll throw an error when it tries to create the emission channel. So we'll make sure we put it in the right place. For now, we'll set that, set that folder to our NIM folder, which is Documents Blender NIM. Uh, let's just go and click on. New, uh, no, not new. Now let's keep it there. We we'll just do select folder. And I think that's all we need to do. Let's click export. Okay. Hopefully that won't take too long. There we go. Let's just let's click OK. We'll have a look at the log. I think the log will be along the lines of. Um, uh, interesting. The map table material emission. There, that makes sense. These ones here, the input map opacity needed really by the table material is available because a passage channel is missing in your texture set. Okay, let's see how we get on. I think that's all fine. I don't usually uh, pay much heed to the to the warnings. Oh, blast it! <laughs> let's get that back in. Come on, get back in there. Where are you, shelf? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, be kind. Be kind to me, baby. Let's try that. There we go. There we go. That's it. There we go. The login shelf. There we go. Right. Okay. So that's that done. Let's go have a quick look in the uh, Windows Explorer. See how it looks. Okay. Here they are. Table. This is a good thing. It's got the word table there. Okay. Because we've obviously got our matchstick as well. Uh, so it's these three files here, isn't it, that we're going to be using. Uh, and let's just do the same for the matchstick. So let's do, actually we'll save this as well, because I think if you save it, it'll keep all that config information. So let's do file, recent files, matchstick. Oh, what a lovely matchstick. What a lovely matchstick. We're going to get very, very familiar with this matchstick, aren't we? Um, so let's also export this. Uh, file, export textures. Now, I think we want 1024, but we don't... Yes, yes, 1024 by 1024. Uh, the config, interestingly, has not gone for the uh, Unity one, which makes me think maybe I didn't set up a, a template for it. But that's fine. We'll just go for the Unity standard metallic. Uh, there we go. By the way, I don't know what this common padding and dilation infinite means. Uh, I tend to just give these things a quick try and see what happens. I've never, never had to use anything like that. So, so let's click export. That was very quick, wasn't it? Okay, let's have a quick look at the uh, folder now. Oh, where have we exported it to? We've exported it somewhere weird, haven't we? Let's just do that again. Export textures. It went into Documents Substance Painter. Blast it. We want it in NIM. There we go. Select folder and do export. Click OK. And now if we go into NIM, we should see our... If I just do date modified, we should see our... 
PNG, our, our PNG files there and our PNG files there. Great, so we've got everything we need now. We've got the FBX file and we've got uh, the PNG files. So let's uh, create a Unity project and import them all in. Okay, so with the uh, project window open, let's create a new one here. Seems like I'm not logged in, I might sort that out in a minute. Uh, we want to make sure it's clicked on 3D, and it is. And we'll, so what should we call this? We'll call this NIM. Let's just call it NIM. I'm tempted to call it NIM Tutorial, but for now let's call it NIM. And we'll click on Create Project. I'll let that finish, and I'll pause it and come back. Okay, here we are. Uh, this is the default layout. I think maybe um, use these updated at some point. I prefer, if I just click over here to the layout, so I actually prefer the tool layout, this one here, uh, with the scene view, uh, the game view, dragged down to the bottom there. So you've got two different pieces there. Obviously, it's entirely up to you how you do that. That's, that's my personal preference, so that I can kind of see what's going on in the game view. So let's import our assets. So if we just um, bring them in, what I might actually do is just, just go over to my... NIM window here and just for now at least just drag them all in so we know that we've got our PNG files so let's just select those and table.fbx and matchstick.fbx let's just drag them in see how that goes I won't pause this time I'll just uh, I'll just have a sip of my water how is everyone it's getting a little bit warmer in this country I live in the UK if you hadn't guessed by the accent but still a bit miserable. But the, but the evenings are drawing out. Did you say drawing out? Going out. So we're getting a bit lighter, which is absolutely great. Right, so that's installed by the looks of things. Uh, imported, rather. So let's start with the table. Um, yeah, there it is. Look at that. And we'll just pop this into here. Actually, what I might do, actually, because it's already annoying me. I'm going to delete the materials folder. Okay, that, that always annoys me. And what I think I'll do... What happens now? Has it gone pink? Yes, this is it. And probably the matchstick's done the same. There we go. So what I'll probably do... Let's just create a... A folder called models or something like that create a folder help me Lord there we go models and let's just drag this lot in there can I just do that no I thought I could I thought I could drag select but it looks like I cannot can I do that I can do that select the lot and then just drag that into models like so okay now we've got our, our let's just pull the table there and we'll need to create a new material so let's just do that create uh, material, table material, and then we start pulling these guys in. So, where's our table? Table material, albedo transparency, uh, um, albedo, there we go, that's that one there. Um, metallic smoothness goes into the metallic smoothness, and the normal channel goes, guess what, into the normal map. It might complain, it's not marked as normal map, so I'll just click fix now. I never quite understand exactly what that means. Okay, and now if we drag our table material onto our table, there she is, and I think looking pretty fine, if I do say so myself. Unity is doing a really good job of this. Look at that, fantastic work. That looks, I, hmm, maybe I'm being biased, but I think that looks better in Unity than it does in Substance Painter. Um, I think, you know, on balance, maybe we could have done a little bit more with this felt here, added some effects, but, you know, we, we, we're really just kind of rattling through here. I'll let you have a play in your own time. We're also going to need to get the matchstick in, so let's get the matchstick in. Uh, let's pull that up. There it is. It looks a touch big, does it? It'll become a bit clearer once we've, um, once we've uh, put some materials on it. So let's just do that now. Create a material. Uh, we'll call it matchstick material. And then we'll do the same thing. So albedo transparency goes there. Metallic smoothness goes there. And the normal map goes in normal map. And click fix now. And then if we just get our matchstick material and pop it onto matchstick, there she is. Do you know, it's pretty comfortably sized. for Maybe a bit big. I don't know. Maybe if we um, rotate it. Hang on, is it that way? It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, how's that? And then just pull it down. Bit big, eh? Bit big. So let's just um, let's just reset that. It looks like the scale is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Oh, that bothers me. Did I do? Did I not do uh, rotation and scale? Right. Hang on, then. Let's bring Blender up. I think we might be we might be okay. Uh, Mastic, where are you? Mastic.blend. 
And now what have we got on the... Yeah, look, you see the scale here? It's, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Maybe you spotted that in my original video. So make sure we're in object mode. Do Control a rotation and scale. And then we're going to need to file, export, FBX. But we don't want to be in the Blender NIM folder anymore. We need to be in the Unity NIM folder. Because remember, we've just imported them in. Uh, assets, models. Here we go. And it's matchstick.fbx. Make sure we click selected objects and experimental. Click export FBX. And I think if it's kind to me, those will go to one. Brilliant. Brilliant. We want to keep these as one in here, I think. This is my view. Um, ah, you see, I'm seeing things now that are already bugging me. Look, that probably should have been uh, darkened or something. We can work on that another day, maybe. Well, this is the beauty. Unity will update for you, so you know if you change any of the textures, it'll automatically update the textures. Okay, right. Where were we? So let's just yeah. I might just make that 0 0.5, How's that? Is that too small now? Let's try it and see how we go. I'm happy with that. So what what I will do now as well is um, get rid of the materials folder, delete that. I'm hoping that won't blow it up. No, nope. and we'll just create another couple of subfolders here. Create a folder called table. And also um, create a folder called Matchstick. Keep I can't spell Matchstick. Matchstick, Matchstick, Matchstickle. <laughs> oh dear, right. So we and we get our Matchstick material, all the stuff Matchstick, and just drag that into Matchstick there. And onto the table, we'll do the same thing. Drag the lot into there. Okay, and we've got our models. And now what we can do here is add another folder, create a folder called prefabs. Actually, no, not yet. Not yet, Billio. We're going we're to do a couple more things to it, to these. We're going to add some colliders to them. So let's go into here and we're going to add a component uh, called box collider. Box collider, there we go. And I'm hoping... Which one did I do it to? The matchstick, oh gosh. Can you see? Here we go. So we've got our box collider on the matchstick here, which is kind of good, right? So this is when we're going to use our physics now in a few moments' time. What's going to happen here is um, it's going to use this box collider to work out it's kind of like the the edges of the box. Now the reason it's gone uh, bigger than the matchstick here is because it's used the biggest part, which is our uh, strike or the red strike or whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to try and do, and this is going to be a real faff, is uh, x, y, and z. So we don't want to change the z. Uh, um, the what? Sorry, excuse me. It's the Y, isn't it? In uh, in Unity. So let's just try um, <coughs> zero zero point zero two and zero point zero two. Hang on, sorry, that was the that was it was the Y. What's the Z? Zero point zero two. That's a bit smaller, isn't it? Let's try zero point zero one five. I'm going to go with that. <coughs> Okay, and that's so, so that's slightly bigger than the matchstick and slightly smaller than the strike, which may be actually just the, the worst of both worlds. I'm not sure yet. We can adjust this. There's no um, absolutes. No, I'm going to go for 0 0.02. Sorry to mess about. 0 0.02. Okay, so that's a bit bigger. That, that's what I'm going to go with. And hopefully you won't notice that when it's resting on things. That it slightly hovers. All right, that's our box collider. The other thing we need to do is add uh, a physic, uh, the physics to it. So let's do that now. And we do that. Oh, am I still recording? Sorry, boys. Oh, I get paranoid these days. There we go. Uh, I'm going to add a component. I'm going to add a rigid body to it. Rigid body. All right. Uh, mass, angular, drag, and all this stuff here. I'm hoping that we can um, play around with it. Sometimes I find this very, very fiddly, but we'll get through it together, guys. We're all we're all learning, so we'll get through it. <clears throat> okay, and so what I'll do now is go to my table, and I'll do the same thing. I'm going to box collider, and that's this is a nice size. Now, I'm not I'm not, in, I'm not worried at all about these corners uh, or the underside. You know, we're never going to go to the underside. In fact, look, you, as you remember, we removed that face, so you can't even see the underside. Um, so the, the point being that this is a nice flat surface here that it's going to land on. All right, and we also add ourselves a rigid body. <clears throat> okay, uh, is kinematic. You, uh, do we only use gravity for this? Okay, because we want it to stay exactly where it is. So let's just grab our matchstick. Let's just give this one quick try. Pull it right up in the air and click. Uh, where's yeah? We'll click play. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what's <laughs> so what's happened there? I think is that um, if I just if I just unselect the matchstick. If I just click play now, everything's fine. 
Okay, it doesn't move. <clears throat> but what happens if I re-enable the matchstick and run it? Uh, what's happening is that the matchstick's knocking the table, and obviously with this huge amount of weight, is sending it to, down uh, uh, into an infinite uh, depth of uh, uh, towards the centre of the Earth or somewhere. Who knows where it's going? So what we could do to fix that is um, is add a floor. Um, one thing's one thing we could try. Yeah, I think we'll just add a floor. Let's just do that. Uh, so we'll add three uh, D three uh, D object uh, quad. Okay, and let's just get this right. So we'll no, not in the not in the. It always does this. It always makes it a child of something else. Let's just rename it as floor. We're going to need it at some point. Let's spin it on its x-axis the right direction. That was lucky. Ninety degrees. Um, <clears throat> Then um, we're going to scale this bad boy right up. I don't know why it's uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 10, 10, 10. Uh, hang on, why it needs to be 1, doesn't it? Excuse me. Ah, no, that's 10 now. Is it Z that's 1? Yes. And now we just need to drag it down. Need to find a right size for it. This is going to be a pain. Uh, if I ever go to Z view uh, and then go to... 2D. There we go. We can start positioning this. We can position either one actually. We can position the floor or the table. But let's go with the floor seeing as we've got it. Where's my... So it's the white. Let's try minus one then, shall we? Okay. That's a little bit um, low. Minus 0 0.95. 0 0.94. 93. How's that? We don't want it to... Um, Go underneath it, and let's, let's unclick 3D. There, uh, let's try it. Hang on, is our floor got a? Our floor needs a um, a collider. It's got the mesh collider, and we also add a rigid body to it. Um, uh, we don't want to use gravity on this. I think actually, I've just realised something. Let's just click that. That's gone through there. So why is that? We've got the mesh collider. Hang on one second. Let's just click this and pull it up a touch. Okay, why are you being a monkey? So let's click on our table again and click on use gravity. Is it is kinematic? I'm, I I never know what. I think that might have worked actually. That was it. It was is kinematic is what we wanted. So we can actually remove the floor now. Uh, for, should we keep it? Um, hang on, let's stop there. Let's just delete it for now. Where's my match? There. It's is kinematic is the one here. <clears throat> okay, that's what we want for the uh, for the table, but not for the matchstick. I don't think. There we go. That's, that's actually looking rather good. Okay, we can create a few of them, can't, can't we? Um, a few matchsticks. Um, let's stop it here. Just do a few control Ds and just move them around a bit. Oh, excuse me. There we go. <clears throat> let's drag that one over there. Something like this. I'm just making it up as I go along. Let's zooming in. <clears throat> Come on, don't be a monkey. There we go. Okay, if we get them nice and close, I'm hoping that we can show them falling on top of each other. I want to get them super close. Don't be kind. There we go. And we'll just move you. And we'll just move you back. Okay, let's get them close. And then we'll click here. So one of them stayed, stood up. No, it didn't. Now they all fell, and they all fell on each other, which is what I was very much hoping would happen. And it, <clears throat> and it has. Very pleased with that. Let's just stop that again and run it. Now you'd expect. Oh, I'm very happy with how that uh, the physics has worked on that. Sometimes these things can look a bit light and a bit fluffy, but I think those those bounce beautifully. Just had the right amount of. Uh, there we go. Look at that. Great stuff, guys. That's all we're gonna do for this video. Uh, this has been a very, very straightforward one. It didn't seem to have too many problems, did it? <laughs> I was able to, to fix this. It's just the is kinematic thing. Catches me out every time. Now what I'll do is I'm going to go away and I'm going to add a, uh, a quad for a floor and a quad for some walls. Uh, um, shall I just do that while we're here? You're welcome to switch off now. Um, I'm going to add I'm going to add some uh, some sides and some floors. All right, so let's do that right now. Um, we will uh, get rid of these ma unnecessary matchsticks because we're going to do this all in code. In fact, one other thing we should be doing is adding a new folder called prefabs. Okay, and we'll add our these two here. We're going to bring them into the prefabs folder. Now, it looks like you can't do them at the same time. Matchstick into prefabs. 
and table into prefabs. Okay, and what that does is that stores the the materials, the box colliders, and all these things for it, so that we don't have to drag the, the model out again and uh, add all those bits to it. It's actually all, all set up for us. The I think the position is kept as well. Hang on, let's have a quick look. Uh, yeah, it looks like the matrix kept its X and Y and so on, right? Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's fine. So it's actually kept that as well. You don't have to keep that, actually, <clears throat> if you don't want to. Excuse me, quick drink. Ah, there we go. Um, right, so what was I going to do? I was going to floor, wasn't I? Yes, that's right. Everything needs a floor. So let's quickly do this now. We're going to create 3D object quad. We're going to rotate it by um, 90 on the X. And we're going to res actually let's reset it and then rotate it 90 and then drag it. Is it yeah there we go and we'll just also make that what was this we said 10 by 10 we don't just touch the Z and then we will um, pull it up okay um, let's let's just call it floor. F2. Press floor. Uh, what color should we go for? Uh, let's just let's just add a um, material to it. Uh, let's just for here for now. Let's just do create material. Call it floor material. And then we'll assign it to our floor. Now, excuse me. <laughs> floor material assigned to floor. <clears throat> Thank you. And then we can what we can do is on the floor material here is just click on the colour and just pick a colour that you like the look of. I'm not going to go mad here. What colours are floors these days? Darkish red. It's a poker room after all. <clears throat> Let's just run this as we go. Yeah, it looks like it's not causing any problems. So now what we'll do, I think, is if we just grab that, I'm just going to do Control D, and I'm going to rotate it. I'm just going to press zero there. And I'm going to rotate it and try and work out which one it is. It's the y-axis. Yes, it is. So I'm going to rotate that by 90. So that's going to be the side wall over here. And then I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to rotate. I'm going to, oh, so let's call that wall PF2, wall one. Um, and also, um, what I'll do now is I'll say create material. Wall material, and I'll assign that to wall one. I'm hoping that'll change now. Yes. So if we go to wall material, what should we set that to? We go for whatever we like, really, can't we? Let's just go for blue. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. We can always add, we can add some colours to this later on. Um, and then we'll uh, copy wall one. I say Control D, Control D, and then just flip it. Zero, and then we're going to flip it. One eighty. Is that right? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Something's not right. Something's not right. <clears throat> is it ninety? Is it just a, it's just a control Z. Um, yeah, and then just do wall material, grab it in there. Well, wall one one, <laughs> wall material. Let's just change that <clears throat> to um, blue or something. That's better. There we go. Let's be being stupid. So now I can grab this wall one, pull it into position. I think probably it's facing the wrong way. Yes, it is. So let's just make that 180. There, and now if we face spin that around here, I know it's a bit confusing. Apologies. And then just drag that over there somewhere. Okay, and now if we sort of zoom in, something like that, all right. What we can do, let's go with that for now. That that light is very bright. We might be able to down the intensity of that. I'm not sure. <clears throat> we'll play with that later on. But um, what we can do, actually, what I'm going to do is we'll pull that across. It's about there-ish. So we've got ourselves a room, something like that, uh, and then. If we click on the main camera and then say game object align with view, you'll see it's almost <laughs> it's almost worked. This is this is the game view here. You can see we've got a couple of things we need to do. We need to pull that back in over there and probably zoom it in a touch. Is it field of view? There. 
Okay, so now that's our view on the main camera. We'll probably have to zoom in or, or do something a bit funky when the, the game starts so that it zooms in on the table. All right, so clicking in now, I don't know if you can see the, the uh, matchstick, but it did fall on there. We've got ourselves, excuse me, a floor and some walls. So it's sort of working. Okay, oh, excuse me. What have I just done? Oh, I can click that anyway. There we go. Okay, so it was sort of working um, with that. I might add a, a texture to it or something, but for now, I'm going to leave it like that. All right, with our little matchstick falling nicely on the table. And I will. Um, we'll, what we'll do next is we will talk about the uh, code for NIM, what we're going to need to be doing, as well as how we're going to generate uh, a random number of matchsticks and drop them on the table. All right, we need to make sure the user can see them and that uh, you know they, they fall in a reasonable way that's pleasing to the eye. So we'll work on all that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time. All the best, guys. Bye bye.